Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And today we have a beautiful guest with us. She is Jennifer Walker. She has a beautiful channel in YouTube. She has more than fifteen thousand subscribers, I guess. And I was amazed when I was seeing her videos. And she also messaged me once long back that your videos are also nice. And then some of us decided we will do this session together. So she is going to. teach us tarot and she was uh, showing me the presentation it was amazing there was a lot of fancy things there so <laughs> i'm also very much excited so jerry for welcome to exotic astrology and please tell us uh, what you want to share and you also do readings and yeah. i'll pin your uh, website in the description of this mm-hmm. video and your youtube channel also and we are going to upload this series in parts all, all right so if you are just seeing the first part and you are wondering where the remaining part then it's coming okay hold okay. on stage is all yours <laughs> okay thank you okay i first off uh, uh, i always get nervous on camera so i just put the doll there to people <laughs> so um okay so uh with tarot cards i've been doing it um uh, the first time that i was exposed to it was um from my uncle uh my uncle uh you know took me to uh, a a spiritual shop where for I live and uh he bought me my first uh tarot card deck <laughs> so they say most tarot card readers if you if you run into them they will tell you that the tarot card deck found them they didn't find the tarot card deck they found them <laughs> and that definitely found me uh so that's where I started and I got a deck where it it was the right of weight but it had the definitions uh you know on both sides of the cards So that's how I started out. I'm now uh man, I'm going to date myself by saying this, but I'm in my uh 30s, so it's it's something like over 24 years <laughs> of experience in tarot. So and um I do teach it. I have uh people that I teach this to privately. So I'm just going to give you guys a small snippet of what I talk to my students about. and um so we're going to go over the major arcana and what it is what's the difference between um you know tarot cards and oracle cards because when we first start out you don't know the difference you 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 really don't um also how to break down the cards the uh the elements um the numbers some of the numbers i'm not going to go through each one of them but uh and also the astrology of it and then just general things about should you read reversals not read reversals and so forth Okay, so so you ready to get started? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I guess I should share my screen now. Yes, you should very much share your screen. Okay. Okay, so wow. first let me start out by saying before I get started. So, you want to get something for your tarot cards to kind of hold them in because um they need to be protected. you need to protect the energy. So, as you can see, this is this is what I take with me all the time. This is my travel pack. It's packed with cards. <laughs> all right. So, the first thing How I want to talk cards about, are there. My lord, 1 2 3 4 oh. oh my goodness. 5 6 Oh, there are so many packs. I thought that in tarot there's only one pack. <laughs> <laughs> uh uh there's so many um different uh cards at this point. Um there's so many different decks you can buy. There's so many different oracles you can buy. Uh you can also use playing cards too. And then of uh, course before you start I wanted to ask you another question is what's the origin of tarot and I mean I mean just like in a brief way if you could say Oh okay yeah no worries. Um People really don't know the like uh original origin of the tarot cards, but the Marseille deck um was one of the original um decks. And with the Marseille deck there was no reversal. So like the Rider Waite is the popular deck. So let's give an example of the Rider Waite. All right, there's my cat jumping through the air there. Um so I definitely don't want to show that card. That that's like one of the worst cards in the deck I was about to show. <laughs> the sadness. All right. So this is the Rider Waite deck. And you can see that the image, you know, you have a top and a bottom image on it. This is the Ace of Cups. But in the Marseille deck, 
it's more like I don't have the Marseille deck with, with me at this moment, so we'll just use a deck of cards. So the Marseille deck is more like that. You know, there's no difference between top and bottom. You see, it's like a deck of cards. It doesn't matter which way you turn it, it's going to be the same. Okay. Okay. So, but the most popular deck is the Rider Weight deck which is the deck that I'm going to be talking about today. It's the most widely used deck. It has pictures on it. Um, there's a great books on it. And most of the decks today are based on the Rider Wheat. So pretty much that's, that's pretty much the uh, golden standard at this point. Um, so let me show you what an Oracle deck looks like since there's a difference. So there's 78 cards in the tarot. All right, there's 44 cards in the Oracle. And what's the difference between the Oracle and the Tarot? Well, the Oracle, this is a Romance Angels Oracle. It has words on there, right? It has words on there and it just gives you uh, general definitions. There's no like things to interpret. It's just straight up, straightforward. So, this is why the oracles work because it's more about the person than it is about the deck itself. This is why in my classes I stress um, raising your intuition, doing meditation, daily meditation, connecting with the elements and so forth because <clears throat> you could be on a desert island. Someone, one of my teachers told me once, what happens if you're on a desert island and you don't have any of your tools, what are you gonna do? <laughs> it's you, it's all within you. Everyone can do this, it's just practice and it's all within you. So if you want to be an accurate tarot card reader, you literally just have to really meditate and you have to be dedicated to it and you have to improve your intuition. That is the most important thing, most important. Because um, that's why the oracle works. You know, there's no symbolism on the oracle. It's just straight up. The reason why the oracle works, the reason why the tarot card deck works is because of you. Okay, so let's jump right in. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, you have the Major Arcana. I'll just read off what each card is. So this is the Rider Waite deck. This is the Rider Waite deck for the Major Arcana. So what is the Major Arcana? The Major Arcana is the universe way of saying to you, this is beyond your control. So if you have uh, one of these cards next to, uh, let's just say like the Ace of Cups, which is a minor Arcana, this is like an everyday card, it's going to give it more significance. So we have the full card, right? So that's, that's all about taking a leap of faith. And you have the magician. You have all the tools that you need to move forward. You have the high priestess. I'm just going to briefly go over each one, sorry. <laughs> you have the high priestess. This is using your intuition. You have the empress. Pretty much she represents the planet Venus. She is love, abundance. Then you have the emperor. He's Aries, basically. Think about Aries in astrology. He's in control. You know, he has the willpower. He's, you know, structured. You have the Hierophant. This is about traditions and marriage and so forth. And then you have the lovers. This is about, some people believe, you know, when you do a love reading, it's a twin flame kind of card. It's definitely about love. It's a choice in love. The chariot. Uh, as you can see, the one person there, and you have two, uh, I Sphinxes, I guess. And so they're, <laughs> they're pronounced. But anyway, um, this person's in control. They are victorious. It's almost like they're in battle. They're moving. There's a movement card there. It's movement in there. Then you have the strength card. Um, obviously, Leo, a symbol for Leo would be the sun, right? So, you know, uh, this would be a Leo card. Uh, this is a strength card, which says... If you look at this woman, she's holding the lion. She's holding the lion's mouth closed. The symbolism here is you want to control your passions. You want to be, uh, you want to courage. Because what is a lion? A lion has courage. He's king of the jungle. Then you have the hermit card. If you look at the hermit card and you see how he has the light. He has the light because he is uh, by himself. He's a monk. He's shedding light on what's going on with him internally, right? So then you have the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is basically uh, karma or like luck. You know, you're, you're going to the casino, the roulette, and you're turning the wheel. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> 
So that's what you can think about when you think about that. But usually how you interpret it in a reading is uh, luck is turning in your favor. Then you have a justice card, which is the Libra card, right? This has to do also with Venus, but in the sense of balance. See, there's the scales there. So you have a decision. This is a decision. So if you look at the sword here and you look at the balance, this person is making a decision. They look like a judge, don't they? Then you go to the hangman. This one is, oh, I hate getting this card, but anyway, it's about waiting. <laughs> you're pretty much, when you get that card, you're like, oh no, I'm stagnant. It's, I'm going to have to wait. Oh. <laughs> so you're waiting to gain new perspective. You're waiting things for them to move. <laughs> Then you have the death card, which also is like we talked about as the Scorpio card earlier, uh, which obviously the eighth house, what is the eighth house? What is Scorpio? It's all about death. It's about resurrection. It's about transformation. So there you go. That's the death card. And you can see that there. Uh, it looks like a very bad card. Doesn't it? It's like a flood going on in the background and people dead over there. <laughs> anyway, Then we have the temperance card. The temperance card is about patience. So if you think about the temperance card to like uh, baking a cake, so you want to make sure that you have an equal give and take of each ingredient. If you don't, then it's not going to taste right, right? So it's about an equal give and take. Then you have the devil, which is also the Capricorn card. The devil card is when you know something's not right, when something is off, uh, when there's an unhealthy attachment. You see these two people, they're attached here and you have the devil overseeing it. And then you also can look at the colors of the card. And you can just see like yellow is a, was more of a positive color. Black is not a good color. So any of the darker colored cards, you know that it's a more of a negative kind of in, uh, interpretation of it. The tower. So this is when, I don't know, you hit an animal or you get into a car crash and you're just like, oh, what am I gonna do? <laughs> It just was unexpected. This is a sudden, what, what's going to happen? It's like a sudden shake up. That's the tower card. The wish card, uh, the star card, which is the wish card. I just automatically say wish because it's like uh, in the nursery rhyme, uh, twinkle, twinkle on the star. You know, <laughs> like when you see a falling star, you wish on it. So that's how you would think about it when you're, you're in a reading. You're, you're kind of like, all right, what is my wish here? What am I wishing? What's my hope? What's, uh, and it's a very spiritual card as well. The moon card, um, think about the moon in general uh, at nighttime. Uh, you, when, when the sun is out, you can see everything, right? You can see everything. But when the moon is out, your vision is cloudy. It's, you're not exactly seeing everything that you need to see. Uh, when you're dreaming, you know, things are kind of distorted. So this is a, a card of dreaming. It's intuition. It's, it's uh, in a reading, it would be about uh, deception or manipulation or some kind of thing to be revealed. Not always a negative connotation, just depends how many, what cards are around it. And as I said, the sun card. Sun card would be representing of Leo for astrology. And you can see there's a child there and they seem happy. There's an innocence to it. There's a white horse. White means innocence and purity, right? And they're charging forward. They're happy. There's an innocence. It, this is one of the best cards you can get in the deck one of the best cards you can get because it's saying to you basically the universe is on your side that everything's all going to work out no matter how hard you think it's going to be it's all going to work out and then you got the judgment card um the judgment card uh, a lot of people look forward to that in my readings <laughs> because that's known as the reconciliation card it means if you look at the card oops sorry guys if you look at the card it has a flag on it right it's, it's saying to these people that are being risen from the grave, obviously that's what's going on in this card, the angel's healing these people. It's a healing card. So it means that whatever bad things are going on in a relationship or with a boss or a friend, you had a fight. When you get this card, you know that you're going to make up and things are going to be okay, that you're going to reconcile that situation and there's going to be healing that's going to happen. And then you have the world card. And it starts all over again, right? So you have mastered everything. You have mastered, because this is a whole complete story of what we go through in life. You've mastered everything. So it's the end, and it's also a beginning. It also can represent travel. If you look at this card, it is the world. 
it's, it's a, a travel, you know, this, this person's like, kind of like, you know, there's different elements here. Okay. So that's the 22 major Akanen for the Rider weight deck. <laughs> so are you ready for the minor? <laughs> I'm not going to go through each one of these cards because, but, um, each one of the, them as uh, wands and you have cups and you have swords and you have pentacles. Okay. And they're numbered one through 10. So start to finish. So if you think about everything you do in life, things start somewhere and they finish somewhere. So let's, let's talk about the, We'll talk about the pentacles here. Okay. So you have an idea for a business, right? You have the potential for that business and you're like, okay, I had this idea. That would be the Ace of Pentacles. Now uh, you have these two pentacles. So this can represent uh, teamwork with somebody, working with somebody, a partnership of something, coming together, bringing balance to the situation, uh, being aware that, you know, there is a uh, time for this and, you know, time for that. So there's a balance of things that you have to be aware of with the two. Then you have the three. The three represents, I'm just looking for my pointer as I'm doing this. Okay. So the three represents teamwork, creation. If you see these people are building a church of some sort, they're building something, they're getting something together. And then you have the fours. Now, this is all about stability, right? So this person is stable and this actually is kind of known as the greedy card, but <laughs> they're holding on to their wealth as you can see in the card. But, um, and then you have the five of pentacles. Fives are always about change. They're always about something that's going to shake things up to move you forward. And this particular card obviously looks very negative in nature, but sometimes you have to go through transitions and hardships in order to move to the next aspect, which is six. The six of coins is, you know, now this person has enough wealth where they can actually give it to other people. You see that? And then now you have so much wealth that you're like, should I plant another thing, which would be the seven? Should I be patient and plant something else and see if that grows? And then you have eight. So now you have so much work. You're working so hard. You're working, 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 working. So you're just doing repetitive work over and over and over again. That's the eight. And then the nine, if you look at the nine of coins, she has everything she needs, everything she needs. She's able to train birds. She's got all these coins flowing all over the place. She's pretty much enjoying her life and she has a lot of free time to do whatever she'd like to do because she has a lot of money that's coming in and it's coming in from everywhere. And then you have the final, which is the 10 card. The 10 card is the final completion. You literally are growing old. You have like an established mansion. <laughs> you got like dogs, you got everything. You got children. This is like, you know, you've, you've got it all. <laughs> So that is the reference of just that particular thing, interpretation of, you know, one through 10 quickly. <laughs> so now let's really dive, go in deeper and figure this out. All right. So as I spoke about before, we have the cups, we have the wands, we have the swords, we have um, the pentacles. And each one of these represents an element, right? So if you don't know the definitions of the cards, or you forget why you're reading. Um, you can always fall back on what are the elements? You know, what are the basic elements of this card? So if I get a cups, I don't care if it's, um, let's just use an example here if I can find one real quick. Mm. Uh, obviously, here's the five of cups. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that okay? If I hold it up a little closer, can you see it now? Okay. So five of cups. What do you think this person, let's just ask you, since you're my volunteer here, what do you think is going on in this card? If I tell you this is about emotions, this is about water, this is about, what do you think is going on in this card? What's your thoughts? I think the person is a bit sad and he's like, thinking about the things which he has lost or I don't know, there's something at the top also. Great. Exactly. So water, 
Right. <laughs> okay. The element of water. Right. So yeah, I think it also shows something like this that the river is passing and he wants to stop something or he wants to control something but he's not able to do it and it's like that thing that which he wants is flowing and he's unable to do anything to stop it. I, I think it's something like that. Yes, but in the basis, the cups are what? About emotions. Yes. Anything to do with water, right? Anything to do with emotions, right? And, and you pretty much said that in the card. That's why the Rider Waite is a great uh, deck to start out with. This, this should be your starter deck because you can use the pictures to draw upon too as well. And by the way, I also make note to this before we move on here, because that is a good point that you were bringing up just now, whether you knew it or not. So let's go to another deck real quick. Uh, and I'll go to the same kind of card. All right. Now, this is the same card. This is also the five of cups. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Now, you would interpret that differently though. Because now there's not a guy there and he's not looking at cups. Now, how would you interpret that with this fox here and with the chicken in its mouth? How would you interpret that card? He's uh, maybe he's trying to eat and from many days he has not eaten. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe yeah. it's like saying uh, he wants something very badly and finally he gets it and now he's about to enjoy it. Good, good, good. Exactly. So the first thing you should also remember, if you change your deck and you're not using the right or weight or you're using another deck, if the picture changes, the definition changes. Okay. If the picture changes, the definition, it will affect the definition of the card. So you want to go by what the picture is saying because the universe is speaking to you. The universe is always speaking in symbolism. You always have to remember that. So even though this may say five of cups, the picture on the card is not kind of saying that, is it? It's saying that there's some kind of sacrifices being made right now with this, this wolf and this, this uh, chicken, right? So that happens sometimes if you switch up decks. So you have to be aware of that. And uh, that is something to keep in mind too when you change up decks. Okay, so, and I wish I would have known that years and years and years and years and years when I first started. <laughs> so anyway, okay, so let's get into what the water is. So let me see if I can move this out of the way here for myself. All right, so whenever you think of water, the key word is feel, all right? The water element, is feel the cups element the cups whenever you think of that you're thinking of water that is the element of this but the element of this means feel emotions intuition love sadness relationships healing uh, a receptive female energy um so that will help you a lot too because uh, anything to do with water you know anything that you can think of to do with water water is always emotions it's feelings you know, it's very feminine, it's very receptive, and it, and it does have a lot to do with relationships. Mo mostly all the cup cards are to do with relationships. So just to keep that in mind. Okay, so the next one is fire. And fire, which is the wands card. This is the wands card we're looking at. By the way, this is the ace of wands. The key word for this to remember, to jog your memory is passions. Passions, desire, sexuality, uh, movement, willpower, creative force, forcefulness, male. So basically, both water and fire are basically the fundamental elements of a male and a female, if you think about it, right? Males are more masculine, they, you know, forceful, they, they're, you know, the, uh, the masculine energy is so much different from the female energy, right? The female energy is gentle, is nurturing, is uh, <laughs> not that males can't be that way either, but I'm just saying that <laughs> the aspects of them, you know, the, the fundamental, the primordial aspects of male and female is what you want to keep in mind. The primordial aspects of them. What does it mean to be a female? What does it mean to be a male? This will also help when you read cards. This will help you. Okay, so then the next would be air. So air, they say, is like if you look at the tip of the sword, you have this edge and you have this edge. So it's a combination of both fire and water, fire and water, which makes air. 
And air, of course, I feel is more of a, uh, as far as sex goes, it's more of a neutral kind of sex. A sex um, so like, you know how you have the planets and you have Mars is, is a male planet. And then you have Venus is a female planet. So, so you know, you have Mercury, which is neutral. So air, which is Mercury, is neutral. So air has everything to do with mental thoughts and attitudes and intellect and judgment. And so if you get this card in a relationship reading, it's going to say, okay, this person's thinking with their head and not with their heart. So if you get anything to do with swords, the sword suits. This person is thinking with their head. They're not thinking with their heart. They're not thinking with their emotions. They're thinking with their intelligence. They're thinking, okay, uh, if I don't do da 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 da, well, this is going to happen. It doesn't matter what what my heart says. Well, my parents want me to do this, so that's what I have to do. And it doesn't matter what my heart says to do because I have to use my head. Or, you know, it doesn't matter what my heart wants me to do. I need to accept this job over here. So you're thinking. You're thinking, 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 analyzing. You're not really using your emotions in this at all. And it's also to do with change. So, you know, air obviously moves a lot faster. It's very fast moving. So when you get it, it means that something's going to move quickly. Okay, so then we have, did I, yeah, okay, earth. <clears throat> so what is earth? Earth element is when you go outside, you, you, you stand on the ground, it's solid, right? It, it's tangible. You can touch it. So whenever you see these coins, whenever you get the pentacles, regardless of any deck, you know it's going to be something tangible that you can touch. So for instance, if you use this card here, which is the Ace of Pentacles, it means it's first one, right? One. So it's some potential, potential tangible thing we can touch, a potential tangible thing we can grasp onto. It's stable. It's uh, a manifestation. So you're going from all the elements to manifest to the earth element. So you're going from water, then fire, then air, then finally all the elements come together for earth. And that's what makes it stable. That's what makes it tangible. So if you were going to talk about this in a relationship type reading, it would mean this is somebody that, you know, has the potential to get married to, have children, to have something stable with, you know, to grow a future with you get this card. That's potential, potential. It's not saying that it's going to go that way, but it has a strong potential to go that way because of the, the fact that the earth element is there. And if it's for, let's say, uh, if you wanted to do a business reading on this and you said, okay, you got, uh, you got the earth element, then it's saying, you know, this definitely has potential to make money. This is a potential to grow. This is potential for something really great. Whereas if you got like uh, the cups, which is a water element, well, you know, think about water. It kind of, you can't, it pours out of your hand. It drips out. It's, it's not tangible. It's, you can't hold on to it. It, you know, it evaporates. And, um, so for, if, if you got that for, uh, let's say for, for something dealing with your finances, well, that wouldn't be a good thing. It, it just means that, well, I emotionally feel great, but it's not saying that it's going to, go into anything tangible that's going to be able to make you money, right? And it's also fertile. So think about the earth, the earth in general. Just when, whenever you think about the elements or you think about the cards, you want to connect it to yourself and on the outside. So like what fire really is, it's hot. You know, um, what water is and how water works, the properties of water. Um, and then the same thing with earth, how the properties of earth are. Bring it all back to... Everything is uh, all the same. Everything. Everything is interconnected. If you realize everything is interconnected, this will help you with, with any kind of divination that you do. Okay, so um, so let's say, do you uh, want to go into the numbers now um, and start to just go through each one through ten? You think that would yeah, be... we can uh, do this in the next session. Okay. Okay, so thank you everyone for your patience and we'll see each other very soon, okay? We'll Absolutely, thank you so much. All right, thank you.